RPGs in the second half of 1989 are weird. Starting with Mother, the closest we've had to a Dragon Quest style RPG is Hooked no Ken 3. We've had computer ports, attempts to replicate the hot new style of computer RPG, and a lot of settings that break away from the traditional pseudo-medieval Europe setting. And today's game, Tau, was developed by Pax Sofnica, whose previous game on the Famicom was Mother. And while Mother is one of the most beloved RPGs on the system, Tau is one of the most despised. And while it plays very poorly, the reason people really hate it is not the one that you're going to expect. The plot of Tau is that, as per Nostradamus' predictions, in 1999 the world is coming to an end. The demon king Hister has fallen to Earth. As a young man from the village where the meteor fell, you find yourself swept up in the events to stop him. But how do you stop a demon king? By converting the entire world to Taoism, of course. That wasn't me being flippant. It isn't a metaphor in the game. Your goal is to destroy all the false religions like Christianity and have everyone follow Taoism. Tao is the Famicom's equivalent of a wisdom tree game. Except in Japan, Taoism is a fringe belief. So a game pushing Taoism got a really negative response. Technically, Tao is an RPG, but the RPG elements are pretty deeply buried. Most of what you're going to be doing is just walking around from place to place talking to people. You can hit the B button to chat with them, and sometimes the menu will stay open because there's another action you can take. And the menu is a bit confusing even for somebody who understands Japanese. All of the actions are represented by one Chinese character. Not Japanese character, Chinese characters. Now there is a lot of overlap there, but in this instance, the characters don't always reflect what the action they'll do is. Going from left to right and top to bottom, the commands are talk, search, use, take, equip, exit the menu, escape, fight, status, password, figurines, and charms. Every action that you're going to take in the game appears in that menu. Fortunately, you automatically talk to people when you walk up to them and hit B, but they might have something extra to say if you try again. Use, take, and equip I almost never used in my hour of play. There was one place toward the very end of it where I had to pick up and then use a key. Similarly, I was just handed a sword at some point. That is apparently how you get all of the weapons in Tau. You just walk up to the appropriate person and they hand you the weapon. You can level up and earn money, but the only way that you'll ever see the effects of that is by checking your status. Mainly, you use your money to buy passage between different locations, and occasionally you'll use it to buy new techniques. The figurines and charms are things that you'll collect as you go through the quest. They're key items for completing the game. Once you're underway on your quest, sometimes you'll get attacked by enemies. They can attack you anywhere, nowhere is truly safe, and what type of enemies attack you change with how far you've progressed in the story. When you're attacked, it's time to engage with the combat system. And it brings a special challenge. You see, to defeat enemies, you have to mash the A button as hard as you can. Mash it hard, mash it fast, and you'll never be defeated. Well, unless you develop a repetitive stress injury. The rewards for defeating enemies seems to scale with your own power. So walking around and grinding isn't effective. Attacks occur very rarely, and even with that, I think you won't have any trouble with money if you just fight what comes at you. The button mashing technique is also used to power up your spiritual abilities when you find the correct teacher. The moment-to-moment -moment plot of Tao is just nonsensical, mainly because just about everything you encounter is a reference to a Taoist teacher's writings. Mostly Lao Tzu, but not always. The critical path that I followed started out in my hometown, I then left town to explore and met an old woman whose scriptures had been stolen by a demon. Met the demon and fought it, watched the monk achieve enlightenment and turn into a fish, traveled to a Moscow stand-in where the cathedral had been shut up, traveled to some place in North Africa where I fought a lion demon and some guy's greed, then overcame greed myself by not taking his giant pile of money, then wound up somewhere in Europe where I went into a cathedral where people worshipped Jesus but didn't really believe and found the whole thing to be a bit of a farce. 
Then finally, back to Moscow to unlock the cathedral, where I talk to a ghost and a kid pees his pants. In that ramble, I cut out a lot of wandering around in circles and backtracking that the game required. And it really is just as incoherent as my description. The real question about Tau is why do they have you ride dinosaurs when you go to the train station? This is a fairly long game. In my fumbling around, I barely scratched the surface here. You'll need to save your progress, but that password is pretty long. Even if it wasn't an attempt to convert people to Taoism, Tau would be a weird game, and not in the quirky, this is really different so I can kinda get into it way. It's weird in the sense that it refuses to follow game conventions that are set down for pretty good reasons. It plays like a game designed by somebody who had video games explained to them, but had never actually experienced them. There isn't any real strong gameplay element other than mashing the button, and event flags are so nonsensical you basically have to walk around and just talk repeatedly to everyone, then examine everything over and over again. The presentation isn't bad. Check out the lion breaking the boundaries of the interface, for example. The gameplay, or lack thereof, is the real problem. Strangely, it's actually a bit hard to find a copy of Tau. So I'm guessing not a lot of Famicom fans had a chance to be converted.